let's tackle the most critical question at hand, which is, what is chemical engineering? This is a very difficult question to answer, because as I hope I'll illustrate, there are so many applications of chemical engineering. If you ask this question to 10 chemical engineers, you would likely hear 10 different answers. I'll attempt to summarize very broadly. The key word that always comes to my mind when thinking about chemical engineering is process. The core competency of chemical engineers is the ability to design a process with the end goal of making something by chemical or biological means, typically but not always in large quantities. Here, a process means a series of steps or actions to transform raw materials into a finished product, similar to how a computer engineer thinks about an algorithm. The amount of goods that fall under this definition of made by chemical or biological means is quite extensive, and it can change the way you view the world. For me, almost every trip to the grocery store or pharmacy leaves me wondering how certain products were manufactured. For instance, just some examples of products made by chemical or biological means can be sports drinks, pharmaceuticals, toothpaste, sugar, ammonia, gasoline, and paper towel, among many others. These products are generally produced out of some combination of raw materials in large quantities. A chemical engineer might design or oversee the process that manufactured these goods. Another word that comes to my mind when I think about chemical engineering is scale. Chemical engineers are equally capable of understanding and exploiting phenomena that occur at a variety of scales. For example, a chemical engineer can understand and model the way a fluid behaves, whether it is a reaction occurring in a very small microfluidic device, or crude oil flowing through the very large Trans-Alaska pipeline, or anything in between. Some chemical engineers have the duty of performing scale-up analyses. In the course of researching a new product, experiments are typically carried out at the benchtop scale first, because smaller operations are both safer and cheaper, especially when still learning about the process. After the process is established at the benchtop scale, a chemical engineer works to transition the slightly larger pilot scale, and then finally to the full scale, where the product is made in a large quantity. You might be thinking that this task isn't very complicated, and that scale-up involves only multiplication of the scaling factor, which is the ratio of the sizes of the systems. However, this is not the case. Consider, for example, the temperature profile in one of these reactors. For the small test tube, and perhaps even, even the pilot scale reactor, the temperature is likely to be uniform at all positions within the reactor. But in the full-scale reactor, you might expect that the temperature would depend on the position within the reactor due to the surface area to volume ratio. Yet a third way I like to think about chemical engineering is just the ability to solve a problem by applying knowledge of science and mathematics. I focus heavily on the critical thinking aspect in each course that I teach because to me, the ability of chemical engineers to learn and apply their knowledge to new and unfamiliar problems is a big reason why we are always in demand in a variety of jobs and industries. A useful way to think about these differences between engineering and the core science and mathematics is that science and mathematics seeks to explain the world as it is, while engineering seeks to exploit this knowledge or to apply this knowledge to build things or to solve problems. I'd also like to mention here that one of the biggest misconceptions that I notice is that chemical engineering is the same thing as chemistry. From my own recollection of all the prereqs for engineering, Perhaps Gen Chem and Orgo are two of the most polarizing. Please excuse the bad pun there. I've noticed that some students declare chemical engineering because of positive students with chem chemistry, while some bright students unfortunately stay away from chemical engineering because of neutral or negative experience with organic chemistry. If this sounds familiar, you should know that you are not alone. I personally struggled myself to understand organic chemistry at first, and I was pleased to discover that chemical engineering is equal parts biology physics, and calculus. To summarize, these are my three working definitions of chemical engineering. First, to design processes to produce anything made by chemical or biological means. Second, to understand and exploit chemical and physical phenomena at a range of scales. Third, to solve problems by applying knowledge of all branches of science and mathematics, not just chemistry.